Good morning, everybody. And uh, are you all awake? Not two rough nights yesterday? Okay. Um, we're from Drop Solid, Wesley and I. Um, I think I have an introduction slide. So I'm Frederick Wouters. I'm the enterprise architect at Drop Solid, and Wesley is also an enterprise yep. architect at Drop Solid. Morning. Um, and um, if you don't know Drop Solid, uh, obligate, like, like we need to introduce the company, of course. Um, Drop Solid is a Belgium based company. We're in Ghent. Uh, we have employees all over the world, also in Ukraine. And um, uh, we have partnerships also in Europe. Uh, we started actually not even 10 years ago, I think it's eight or nine years ago. Nine, yes. And we've grown from uh, yeah two two founders until we are now almost at a hundred people. So uh, like steadily growing, um, and we're not only doing Drupal uh, because in Belgium we're a Drupal agency, but um, outside of Belgium we do digital experience platform. Now, uh, what a digital experience platform is, I will uh, talk more about this today. I'm going to do two parts. The presentation is in two parts. First, I'm going to try to inspire you a bit um, with personalization examples that you can see in the wild, which you probably have seen already. And the second part uh, will be you doing the personalization workshop. So it's a workshop. If you have your computer, you will not need it in the first minutes. But it might be interesting if you're joining the workshop to open it. If you have a GitHub account or a GitPod account, that might come in handy because we're going to do it on GitPod. So you don't need to set up your Docker locally or, or LAMP stack or whatever. We're going to do it on Gitpod, so it will work for everybody. Um, okay, let's start with the inspirational part. There are still some people coming in. Come in and uh, take a seat. Um, did you know that 89% of customers begin doing business with a competitor after a poor uh, customer experience? So people change after poor customer experience experiences and when customers are tar targeted with three personalized pages conversion rates double going from 1.7 percent to 3.4 percent and when they're exposed to 10 personalized pages conversion rates jump to 31 percent so it's not something that we invented and we think it works no, no this is something that's actually proven and uh, by um, like scientific institutes they, they prove this kind of statistics uh, now Personalization, a very broad subject. What is it? You all know it. Uh, Spotify has made a wrapped where you get, based on the things that you listen in your Spotify, you get at the end of the year a report and, and suggestions of, of your music. And if you are a sportsman and you like Strava, they also do it. So you see in the bottom, it's fairly new. It's not, uh, I don't think it's a year or old or more. Uh, they suggest routes. So based on your speed based on the distance that you run they will suggest routes near your location so that you can try other things and, and see see this kind of personalization at work netflix most of you know it i don't i don't have it myself but i saw this presentation of them and they don't only recommend different things based on your viewing behavior but also the way they construct the page the the kinds of video that they will propose to you but also all these images are the same show 
they will generate different images based on your viewing preferences. I found this mind-blowing. So everything at Netflix is a recommendation. I say that 80% of what people watch comes from these recommendations. So um, Amazon, also some of you might know this, uh, it's an online store. Uh, they sell stuff and um, they also do personalization. Uh, you see here on top there's some new things that are personalized. There's some things that based on your customer data profile, customer data platform is the server side component that hosts customer data profiles and they also have this component based on your viewing behavior, they will suggest items that might be interesting for you. Of course, as GDPR is a thing, in the bottom you see view or edit your browsing history because sometimes you're like looking at items that you do not want to show up again on your page. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they keep this in the customer data profile. They don't just personalize the web pages, but they will also send you marketing automation emails based on these things. Yeah, so it's linked with the marketing automation system where Amazon will send you then based on these products that you have looked at, they might uh, interest you more. Other, um, other vendors do this as well. Eh? For example, uh, TripAdvisor, if you visit so certain cities, they will keep sending you emails until you say, okay, I'm not interested in going to Germany anymore. Please leave me alone. Um, can you do this in Drupal? No, you cannot. Drupal is too limited for this. But if you do it on a Drupal-based DXP, Drupal combined with a marketing automation tool and a CDP, then you can do it. And this is what we're going to do today. Um, the parts, the moving parts in the system that we're going to do in the workshop is Drupal as a content management system, Mautic as the marketing automation tool, and Apache you know me as the customer data platform, which will allow us to do the personalization. Okay. This is the moment where we start a workshop. So if you have any questions or if you're stuck, just raise your hand and I come over to you and help you out. I'm going to explain some things first. So we're using Gitpod. Um, it would be interesting if you can log into Gitpod. Um, I'm going to move this a bit closer so I, it's easier for me. Um, and you need to create a new workspace. I'm going to do it all along so you can see the demo if you're uh, not um, using a computer. Okay. Uh, create a new workspace and here you can paste the GitHub repository. I prepared a GitHub repository with everything that's needed. It's based on the Wadby stack. I added a gitpod config file um, and, every and, and some commands uh, that we will need. So this is the repository that you want to use. It's uh, Wouters F slash docker for Drupal dash Mautic. This one is what you want to copy and you want to paste it in here. I'm going to leave it here. Uh, give me a sign when, you've, uh, when you're ready to follow along. You can do it, that's a fun workshop, and it will work for everybody. If you're like doubting, I see some people doubting, no? Yeah, do it. It's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> it will work on your machine, the personalization, and it's really cool to do the demo. Ready to go? No? I'm going to give them a few more seconds. So you paste the URL into the git pod, press enter, I'm going to press it already, um, log in, and then it will start checking out the repository and creating the workspace. Okay, so everybody's getting started here. What you see here is the get started window in git pod. I'm going to close it because I'm going to do the explain explaining. And you see in the bottom, there's the terminal. This is the terminal of your Git pod. So actually, Git pod is a Docker container where all your containers will be uh, uh, booted in. So you see that's it already uh, pulling in my Docker images. The Docker images that are prepared are in the Docker Compose file. So this is where they are described. And what's in there is the database. It's a Drupal. It's a Mautic. There's a PHP MyAdmin. Uh, there's also Varnish, but it's not enabled. There's also Solar. There's Elasticsearch, but those are not enabled. And you can see that. After doing, uh, pulling them, you can see that they are started already. And then on the left side here, there's a remote explorer. Here you see which services are exposed. This is configured in the git pod uh, YAML file. So you see also when you hover on, the, on them, there's a globe on the right side. So this way you can visit the specific service. The services that I have is Mautic, 
PHP my admin, you know, the database administration tool, Mailhawk to capture any emails that go out, Drupal or Drupal website, and the database. You see there's public and private. Public means it's exposed to the internet. Private means you can only see it if you're in the Git pod session. The commands that I prepared are in the commands uh, markdown file, um, but we're not going to need them right away. Let's start with configuring Martic. You can open that by clicking on the globe on the right. And if anything, like if... Uh, I'm going to start by configuring Mautic for people that are following along. So I repeat, Mautic, you click on the globe, then you see the installer. It's working? People are following along? OK. I'm going to uh, add a database table prefix because I just, I just added one database in the project, and we're going to do Drupal and Mautic next to each other. Mautic. And the password is Drupal as configured in the .env file. Uh, you need to configure a Mautic username and a password. And then uh, this is the email configuration in Mautic because Mautic is sending out emails. We will not be doing that, so I'm just going to skip this step. After configuring your Mautic, you will see the Mautic login screen. I'm going to log into Mautic with the credentials I just created. So we've set up Mautic. That was, I think, a minute or two. Great success. I'm going to give the people some time to do the flow. Because in Mautic, we will expose the API to Drupal, and we will um, do this via OAuth. I'm going to configure this. In Mautic, you can do that by pressing configuration, and then we need to do some settings. Eh? So you have the API settings where you can say, OK, enable the API. I'm going to save it. Um, you also will need to enable uh, to change the course settings because um, we need to allow the domains that we're using. I'm just going to like disable course, uh, but you should, of course, uh, add your domains there and not just disable it. Uh, this is obvious. Um, what I'm also going to do is creating API credentials. So we're going to use OAuth between the systems, and therefore I'm going to create an OAuth2 credential. This will allow us to let Drupal connect to our Mautic. Now, you see the redirectory. This is actually the Drupal URL where Mautic will uh, point back to. To find that, we need to find Drupal in our Gitpod workspace, you can click it here, take the URL, and then you can paste it here. But there is one detail. You will need to add slash mautic slash callback to this URL. You need to click this one here, like this. With this URL, mautic can go, go back to the Drupal instance uh, correctly. After clicking save, you will see that the client ID and a client secret has been generated. After this, let's go and create a form. We're going to use the form because the personalization will be as such that we're going to set up uh, Umami, the food install profile on Drupal, and we're going to sel selectively sh show a form to people that only visit vegetarian food, for example. We're going to allow them to subscribe to the vegetarian newsletter. Um, and therefore, we need a vegetarian newsletter form. So let's create that one. Standalone form. Um, I'm inter yes, I'm interested in vegetarian dishes. And I want to some add some fields. So let's add an email field. By clicking contact field here, this will link the people that enter their email details into the form directly to the contact created in Mautic. You want to do that in specific cases. I'm also going to add uh, a first name field. <coughs> and a last name field. <coughs> a 
And so you see that I've added these as contact fields. This means that when a person submits this form, the contact will be created directly with these details. So it, it will be in the lead tracking system because Mautic is actually a contact management system. Eh? It's a marketing automation tool. So, okay, let's save this form. We're not only going to show this form to people that are vegetarians, we will also segment in our Drupal front that people that like chocolate. So we're also going to create the chocolate newsletter form. I want the chocolate newsletter, please. We're going to add the email field again, make it a contact field. So, and I'm going to add the first name and the last name again. Last name, oops. Okay, let's drag the email to the bottom. Save and close. So we have two forms now. The I'm a chocolate, I want a chocolate newsletter, and I'm interested in more vegetarian dishes. So th these two forms will be selectively shown in Drupal based on the surfing behavior. This is the Mautic configuration part. We're done in Mautic. Let's now go to configure Drupal. To go to Drupal, I already told you, you need to click on the globe icon here. But you saw already that there is this provided host name not valid. This is because it's a Drupal installed, like it's not yet installed, it's out of the box, and the host file does not contain the gitpod.io uh, pattern yet, so I'm going to add that now. How do you do that in gitpod? I've added the commands here in the, let me enlarge this a bit, in the commands file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shell into the Docker container. The Docker container has been booted up, which you can see with uh, docker compose ps. Here you can see the different containers. And by pasting this command, you will shell into the Drupal container. Oops, pasted a bit too much there. So you see here, we're in the Drupal container, the, the what be Drupal container, okay? In this container, we can, I, I'm using VI to edit files. I don't know about you, everybody has their preferences. So I'm going to edit the settings file. And as you see, I've prepared the correct host pattern here, which where I added gitpod.io. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the file, and here I'm going to add gitpod.io to the trusted host patterns. Immediately after saving this, you will see that your Drupal installation is actually ready to go. So I'm going to start installing Drupal. Make sure that you select demo, the Umami Food Magazine here, because otherwise we won't have the example content and makes it easy to work with. So there we go. This takes some time. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a, so the, the whole VI part, you can just actually just select and get part the files as well. There's a file editor as yes. well. Um, just in case you're not you're not a fan of VI like like Frederick is. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to, you all know this, how it goes. Um, I don't think I have to explain this to you, right? We're from Belgium, as we told before. I'm not going to receive these emails. Et voila, okay, so we have a working Umami site. Um, working on Gitpod, I think it took us some minutes. Um, this is great. After installing the Umami site, uh, we will need to install some modules there. Valérie, we were talking yesterday about installing a specific module on Gitpod. This is the step where you need to pay attention, right? So um, here you see, uh, we already shelled into the container and you can use Composer here. So we're going to install the Unomi module, which will allow us to connect to uh, Apache Unomi um, instances. We're going to install the Drop Solid Personalization module, which is a module that we contributed to allow to connect to our uh, specific personalization uh, engine, where we added some AI to do the segmentation automatically. We're going to install the Mautic Paragraph module because this not only adds Mautic paragraphs, I know the naming is confusing, but it also add, adds Mautic blocks. Uh, so 
multi paragraph adding mounting blocks. And then we're also going to add asset injector because we're going to inject some JavaScript into the pages and the meta tag module because the dishes, the, the food, the chocolate desserts, the soup have a lot of tags and we're going to expose them via the keywords meta tag to our uh, tracking system. So here we go. I was already logged in here in the shell. This should work. No, I'm going to do them one by one just to win some time. Don't want the demo to end too soon, right? It gives you the time to copy paste along. Oh. So all these modules are now available for our Drupal in uh, the code, in the installer, in the um, Docker container. We need to enable them, of course. So let's start with you know me. Drop sort personalization. Multic paragraph. Asset injector. Um, what else? Meta tag. Oops, uh, and I think that's about it, yes. And then we're going to enable them. Ah. You saw a remark about internal page cache conflicting with the drop sort personalization. This makes sense because the personalization will show different versions of, for example, the front page to different users. An internal page cache will only cache one page for a specific user. So that's why uh, it makes sense that we conflict with this model. So we'll need to disable the internal page cache module to make this uh, work properly. OK, with that done, we're going to now need to configure all these modules. I'm going to start with the multi configuration. Here you see you can choose OAuth. And we're going to choose HTTPS. The base URL is the one that we created. I'm going to go to the credentials here because we will be needing them. And for this one, we won't need the trailing slash and the starting uh, protocol. We will need the client, client ID, client secret. The redirect base URL is filled in correctly out of the box. So when we save this form, you will see that we are pointed to we are pointed to Mautic and we need to log in there. This is the OAuth flow working, and now we will see that it wants us to approve the connection between Drupal and Mautic, which we want. So now we've connected our Drupal with Mautic. This means that we can now create Mautic blocks and uh, connect to the API. At uh, Drupal Solid, we also have some implementations where we have custom modules pushing data, tags, uh, contacts, things directly into Mautic, and the API of Mautic is exposed via this module as well. So it's actually sort of a, a Mautic API module, but it, yeah, the naming is um, confusing. So Mautic is configured. Let's now go to the You Know Me module. Was it not enabled because of the conflict? Let's see. Yeah. We're going to need it. Uh, there we go. You know me. We're going to use the Drop Solid Platform Connector. The cookie name here, this is the Yes? What is you know me? I don't know that. Apache you know me is the, the tool that we use under the hood to do the, that's actually the customer data platform. So it is a CDP tool, you know, the, you remember the three globes that we have. So we have Drupal for content management, we have Mautic for the marketing automation, and Apache you know me, that's the tool that we use for customer data platform. So that's where um, all the customer, like the, the profiles are being saved. It keeps track of sessions, and we can segment users in that tool. So when enabling that one, we're also going to use HTTPS. 
And there, we're going to go to a platform. I'm going to show you the credentials. This is our interface, because Apache, you know me, out of the box is a REST API. Um, and we've built an interface on top of that to make it easy. I'm going to use the Florista CDP, take the information here. So these are the credentials that we will need to connect to you know me. So um, we're using one of our, or on our platform for now, but, but you could just as well uh, set up a you know me yourself. Um, but we didn't get that to work in Gitpod yet. Um, um, but but yeah, we're using this one because it's easier for, for now for, 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 the, for demo purposes. But you could... Um, you can connect to a, a like, a raw, you know me as well. Yeah. Uh, we just made it easier a bit. Okay, um, we will need the client secret there. I generated one. It's this one, Wesley. Yeah, I also shared it in the in the um, chat on the uh, I don't know the event app you, in this um, for this specific session. I, uh, I copied it, so you don't need to copy it up from the screen. Maybe leave it a bit on the screen. Yes, for people who do not have access uh, um, here. I know, I know, it's sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way around it. <laughs> it's automatically generated, so yeah. Do you know me, uh, client secret? So maybe maybe we need to explain a little bit how things are connected to each other. So we have a Drupal um, that is running on its own. It connects to uh, Motic. That's l like just for creating the forms and sending the form data. So subscribing to 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 newsletters basically. Um, that, that's I'm tired to it. Motic is a bit more complex than that. Um, and then we have the, the CDP, uh, where um, based on, on, on your um, uh, browser um, or, or your behavior, it will send all, all the meta text to that, to, to the CDP, and then from there we'll. Okay. <laughs> It's going through the front end. Okay. We'll show. I'll sh I'll I'll uh, okay. go deeper on that. We have ten more minutes, so I'm going to like continue the workshop if that's okay. Uh, we've now configured a Mautic in, uh, module. We've configured the Unomi module. We need. We still need to add a JavaScript so that the tracking starts to uh, act. So therefore, we're going to do go to the asset injector, add a JavaScript there, and here in uh, our text file, I've added the scoring.js. So this is the Unomi tracking script. And in the Unomi tracking script, you will see that there's the default tracking script, which is also exposed in our drop solid platform. So you see, it's, we call it the capture script, which just captures user data and, and saves it in the, the customer data platform. But I've added something specifically for this workshop where if there is keywords, which will be the tags that are on the dishes in the Umami uh, uh, it's going to be chocolate, it's going to be soup, it's going to be vegetarian. And for each of these dishes, uh, I cleaned it up a bit, I'm going to add a specific field to the CDP. Why do I do this? To explain to you that the CDP is not something that's fixed. You can add your own fields, your own data into the CDP. So you can have a commerce system putting commerce data into the client data. You can have your Drupal adding like uh, visiting behavior to the to the CDP, and you can have like the mailing system adding mailing preference to the CDP. So this really that's why it's called the the customer data platform. Th this is where the customer data comes together. And so what I did is I've added the re recipe field here, and I'm going to add plus one after visiting I a don't recipe. Use at all. Okay, let me come to that uh, also in the end. Sorry. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um, I'm going to try to finish the workshop, and then we can go. Uh, all right. In deeper. Did I paste it now? No. So I'm going to paste it here. This is the Unomi script. Uh, let's not pre-process it and load it in the head. Um, there's also the Mautic tracking script, and you can find this under configuration. So 
striking. Um, Frederick is now doing this in, uh, in well, via um, the, the asset injection uh, module, but normally, normally we do this via a Google Tag Manager. Normally, so yeah, that's what most people do. It. But this is not a best practice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this just is. This works for the for the workshop. Good, good one. Yeah. Okay. So I've added the Martic and the Unomi JavaScript, and then there's one more thing I want to configure, and I added the, the specifics in the uh, commands file. We need to configure the meta tag module and make sure that the tags and the categories of the recipes are exposed to our tracking. Therefore, we go to configuration, meta tag, content, and there you will find the keywords, and this will expose the categories and the tags that the recipe is in to the front end so we can start working with it. So the, the, the tracking script will um, capture all metadata. That's what, what the JavaScript basically does. So all the metadata that is in, you, in the head of your HTML, it will uh, copy that and send that to um, um, the um, you know me instance, sorry. So, okay, I'm going to the front end. I'm going to open my inspector. And then if we look at some dishes, let's see if it works. Eh? So what's happening here is I added some console open clocks, also another uh, thing you won't do on production, but you see that the courses, sets, this is a main course, it's vegetarian, pasta, and it's baked. Um, there are some other recipes, let's go there. Ooh, chocolate, chocolate's good. So voila, this is there. One more thing we need to configure in Drupal is the actual personalization. So we need to add a block that will show up only to people liking chocolate. This is the magic mustard. So we're going to structure blocks like, like we do in Drupal. And then we're going, I'm, do, I'm going to do it via the content, place block, and I'm going to add a custom block. There you see that there's the Mautic block which is added here from the Mautic paragraphs module, remember? Um, so we're adding the, let's start with chocolate, um, subs subscription block. And here you see that there is a form field where you can select the form, and these are the modic forms. This will allow the forms to be injected automatically into Drupal. The next thing you see here is the Unomi segment selection. This is added by the Drop Solid personalization module or the Unomi module. And here you see some segments already. There's a lot of segments. I prepare these segments for you because I, I, I do some preparation in advance, right? Uh, you see there's a lot of things there. The surfing from Czech Republic, uh, likes vegetarian, soup person, and we were talking about chocolate, so people liking chocolate. This block, I'm going to save it and position it because uh, let's display the title for now. Content. So we're showing this with a, with a motor block for now, but you could do it with any other block. Um, yes. w we do it because, well, that's, that's part of the demo, but you could just as well show an image to an extra chocolate image on your home page based on, uh, on the section that they are in. I like vegetarian food, so that's why I'm adding the I like vegetarian food block. And the second newsletter, I I'm interested in vegetarian dishes, will only be shown to people looking at vegetarian food, likes vegetarian. To illustrate this, I'm going to select the content region, drag it on top of the content, save the block, and now, as an admin, of course, I will see, this, I will see these blocks. Let's go to a recipe, and you see there are the blocks, but of course, I'm an administrator, I see, I see all of them. But as an anonymous user, you will not see them. You will only start seeing them after the segmentation detects that you're a chocolate kind of person or you like vegetarian dishes and you have visited these vegetarian dishes a lot. So how does this work, the CDP? I'm going to show it in the Dropsol platform interface because that's where the magic happens. This is, in, this is the view on Apache Unomi. So here you see, I'm going to take the vegetarian one. What happens here is, this is the name of the vegetarian segment and here, you see, these are the fields that we are adding via the JavaScript into the CDP. So this can be anything. If you have a commerce system and it's about the, the size of your orders, or it can be 
uh, if you're doing uh, Azure integration and it's about specific fields that a user has. And so this allows pe people to be segmented in different kind of segments. That's the easy way because we're doing it in JavaScript and it's logical. But we also have a discovery mechanism which allows the AI to look at, okay, which kinds of groups are there on the site by looking at the traffic and just automatically trying some groupings. I'm going to just illustrate that. So we have some example groupings here. Of, of course, our Florista is an example website, so the traffic might, that might not be making sense here, but these are groups. So this is about taxes, this is about goods, this is about specific names, and this is about uh, accounting. So here you see that this has detected these kinds of groups on the example website. And you can run it with um, the discovery with four groups, three groups, you, and this is what you try a bit as a marketeer. You try, okay, give me some groups, try three, try four, try five, and then we see, okay, this is the division of things that I see on my website. Then you can say, okay, transfer them to segments, and with these segments, this is a different kind, they can be automatically segmented because we know the traffic that looked like the segment, and we can automatically segment and do this into these categories. So we have two types of segmenting here. We have the logical where we say, okay, people are visiting chocolate stuff, we add a counter, it's a scoring mechanism, and we have the automatic segmentation where it's really based on your surfing behavior and just trying to make it fit in one group or another. And but there is no pre-configuration for the model. It detects automatically? Uh, yeah, it's a k-means model, so what it does is take like all of the data, and it all the data means um, all of the events that happen, so page loads, and with the every page load there's a title, there's keywords, so you can actually steer a bit what is in the AI, okay. but it takes all this into account, and then it says, okay, I have this amount of traffic of two weeks, and try to group them in three groups based on all this data. And then it gives you three groups, and it takes the keywords of the, the keywords to show you, okay, these are the, the groups that we think it makes. We say about two weeks of traffic is like, de it depends, of course. Yeah. Uh, with AI, like always, the more data you have, the better the, your grouping is, of course. Uh, so, but valid question, good one. So, I'm going to show you, I showed you the vegetarian light. Uh, so, what I've configured here is if people have visited more than four vegetarian dishes, they're going to fall into this segment and they will start seeing this. The segmentation was already active, I uh, created these in advance. So, actually, when we now the moment of truth. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see if it works. <laughs> it's not on your computer, it's on, on Gitpod. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to be a vegetarian today. Um, small sidetrack. We also created a browser application called the Segment Selector because what I'm going to do now is manually be a vegetarian by selecting the dishes, but having imposing this on your marketeers is not a good thing. So we have an, a browser app, so they can just put me in the segment. Let's check how the site looks. Uh, just a small side track here. Okay, so this is uh, oatmeal. This is uh, carrots. Let's see. I'm going to just check all of them. Uh. <laughs> I don't remember the, the amount that I put there. So, for variation's sake, let's find something else. Maybe some, some chocolatey. Uh -huh. Back to the recipes. Mediterranean quiche, no. Which is a vegetarian. I expected it to come like around now, no. I did save the blocks, right? Yeah, I did save the blocks. The JavaScript is there. Uh -huh. Yeah, but maybe look in, um, in the uh, visitor logs of your um yeah. soup. Gluten free. Hmm? No, no, it's not uh, that there's no errors. It's, uh, it's okay. Has to work. Will work. The block is there, right? I saved it, right? Just check. Cash. Oh, that would be very Drupal-ish. <laughs> uh, the meta tags, I saved those. Yeah, it should work now. Yeah. Let's see. Vegetarian. Let's do some chocolates as well. See if that one works better. 
chocolates. Exciting. The I, I, I don't know, I don't remember which amount I put it, so it, based on your surfing behavior, you can alter the scoring mechanism also, you can like change the time constraint. So if I'm in chocolate for like this time and you can let it expire, and, and this is in your control because it's a JavaScript API, it's a, it's a REST-based thing, so you can really have control over it, but you see, this is only visible for people that having this kind of surfing behavior, and I visited other pages in between, so if you want to keep track of this in code, it's an entirely different thing, and so this is really something to, um, you could do it, of course. You can do it in JavaScript in the front end, with, but it's a different thing. But now we're really using the, the CDP to, to make it different. Just one more takeaway. We are also using this on our production website. So dropsolid.com. Uh, dropsolid.com. And also here, you see I'm already logged in as an administrator. And you see here, this block, for example, is only shown to people from Prague. I'm going to illustrate this by showing you the segment and how it works. Uh, so platform. Uh, CDP. Now I'm going to go to the Rob Solid CDP here. And segments. Um, here you see Prague segment. And because we track a lot of the user data, you can work based on things that they have visited, but also we do a geocoding. We don't save the IP address because that would be fingerprinting and we don't do that. But we geocode it and we save the, the um, the country and the city, which allows us to uh, see if a person has a certain language, if the country code is checked, if they're coming from a UTM campaign, that will be uh, via the browser or LinkedIn ads. So there's multiple mechanisms that you can use to start making your segments. You really give the market your control over that. Um, voila, and uh, th I think this is the essence of the workshop, and it's about time, right? No? Yeah, you, you know, a couple of more minutes. Maybe, maybe you could quickly explain how this is GDPR proof. Okay, so um, w yeah, it's a valid question and something that you also wanted to know about is the JavaScript, right? The tracking. Yeah, so basically, how does it end up being modic? Uh, so how why did we set up the modic yes. uh, API? So what we did is we show the, um, we render the form on the pages here. Very ter yeah, so here, the, m the moment a person enters the details into modic, there will also be a profile. I'm going to show it in production. But it's different, two different profiles, basically, Let for the same person then. Yes, in Mautic, of course, you, we have also a profile. But the segment that I fall in, as, a, as an anonymous visitor, the moment I fill in these details, the segment also go to Mautic. Mautic is a marketing automation tool. I'm going to find myself in Mautic and show you the segments that I am in. So, Frederick. Mautic's. There is an update available. <laughs> <laughs> Did I click? Yeah. So here you see this is my Mautic profile, my email profile, because I was into, I, you see here, it's also keeping a track of some things. Uh, the Mautic tracker does also these things. It's very limited because it only tracks page, page views and not events, which is very limited. Um, but you have the details here, and here you can add custom fields. So in Mautic, you can add custom fields, and you see that I was looking at the jobs at the drop solid side, and I'm also, it's, it's the first, like it's a, the starting session that I used. And so these segments that I, I was surfing the drop solid side, if we translate that to you, Umami, it would be I'm a chocolate lover, and uh, maybe also like vegetarian food, and then you can create an email. Let's now go to the campaigns from dropsolid.org, and then you can really create personalized email campaigns. So the making the bridge to Mautic, you cannot only personalize on the front page or the detail page of your website, but you can also, let's see if I can edit this campaign here, start the browser. You can really send different <laughs> newsletter based on segments that people are in. So if I'm a technical person, like th this is the newsletter, if you're in marketing, you will receive like a more marketing oriented email. If I'm like tech, I will receive a more tech-oriented email. This is the first level of personalization, receiving a different email. Mautic also has that built-in capability, we didn't do anything on that, to also have dynamic blocks inside one email. So you could also say, okay, 
I just want to make one email with a dynamic block based on the preferences. So you can make a dynamic block based on people if they like chocolate and add some chocolate stuff in there. And so this gives you the possibility not only personalize on the web page, but also in, on the email side of things. So you really have like a personalized experience throughout the contact with your client. I'm going to come to your JavaScript. Sorry. Yeah, one, one more. So the, the single source of truth is the uh, customer data platform. It depends, yeah. Yeah, because we have clients where the single source of truth is, for example, the CDP. But there's also sometimes we, that they have that they say to us, we have a CRM and this is the master data. Mm. And so there you need in Mautic, you, you can also do the synchronization both ways. You can say we're the master of the preferences, but you can also say pull in the preferences from Drupal, for example. We have a client where we have a Drupal profile managing their preferences because it's taxonomy terms and it flows into Mautic. Mm -hmm. and so this is also really depends basically case per case basis. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And then the JavaScript thing. Yeah. To finish it off. So <laughs> drop solid also built the, I uh, contributed to the EU cookie compliance module, which is uh, the module that allows to show accept uh, on a EU compliance way. And these JavaScript trackings, we also, for example, on the drop solid site, we integrated it with them so that if you, deny it, there will not be tracking. Of course, if there's no tracking, we cannot see over the multiple sessions what you're doing, and then we cannot do personalization. But since it's an addition, uh, it's also not a problem. I think we're done. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're also very happy to answer questions here at the booth. Thank you.